Welcome to a dress-up edition of Friday Night Sports Extra, again, trying to make up for Couch <laughs> Potato Night. Uh, we, it, if you think we look good, and if somebody can make us look good, Mr. Tux did it, and we appreciate them allowing us to dress up because if they can make us look good they can make you look good. if they yeah dennis and i was the challenge tom was the easy one right i always wanted to go to, to prom go. with tom this is the best i could do is get a photo like we're at prom maybe we can get a i made a joke earlier a i was later. like the over under before keith makes a prom <laughs> joke and if you said 30 you seconds win? it was under i i did okay well, i did well you look sharp but you no know suspenders you know who looks sharp lake city they look sharp last week they their, looked sharp their, all, all year they have all year you know what, they're back at it tonight, playing for a spot in the semifinals against Capital. First quarter, T-Wolves up by seven, Connor Paulson. On the QB, keeper just running over people. That tied the ball game at seven. That's what we call a truck stick right there for truck the stick. Madden Madden players. Later in the first, Michael Goggin to Jerry Louie McGee. Makes the catch, sheds the tackler, and then takes off for the 62-yard touchdown. 13-7 LC, but Capital led 24-20 at the half. Fourth quarter, LC up three, Kirk McKenzie. Diving in for the touchdown, T-Wolves up by 10. Under three minutes to go, Capitals scored a touchdown, recovered an onside kick, and then kicked this field goal as time expired to tie the game at 34. We go to overtime and in OT. It's Louis McGee crossing the goal line, just getting in. LC up by seven. Lake City had second and goal from inside the one. They were stopped three straight times. Three straight times. They couldn't tell if he got across or not, so he didn't. Lake City wins the ball game 41 to 34 in OT. And yeah, they were going wild there as the T Wolves advanced to the semifinals. Coeur d'Alene taking on Rocky Mountain. And uh, Rocky Mountain looking to end the season for the Vikings. But you know what? CDA thinks why not keep it going? Austin Lee going deep to Ryan Waldy. Big game gets it inside the five yard line. And then Lee punches it in from there. 7 0 Coeur d'Alene. But here comes Rocky Mountain. First play of the next Grizzlies possession, quarterback Christian Blazer breaks a couple ankles, then he's off, and he's taking it the distance in this one. 75-yard touchdown as Rocky Mountain ends up getting the win. Quarter lane season coming to an end as the Grizzlies win at 43 to 21. A couple other games to tell you about tonight. Sandpoint taking on Blackfoot, the Broncos getting the win 42 to 27, so the Bulldogs eliminated in that one. And then Rigby taking on Lakeland. That game is tomorrow at 1 p.m. as they're looking for a spot in the 4A semifinals. And another game for you tomorrow as Timberlake going to take on Fruitland. That game also at 1 p.m. for a spot in the 3A semifinals. Okay, so Idaho is in the quarterfinals into the semifinals. The state of Washington doesn't start their playoffs until next week. But to get into the playoffs, you had to win a play-in game tonight. That was the goal for Mount Spokane, the 3A GSL champion. And they were taking on the Lions of Kennewick at Joe Albee. Wildcats strike first. Mike Shoup, look at the guy go. Up the middle, down the sidelines, and see you later. The Shoup scancer, uh, scamper, he's fired up. 7-0 Mount Spokane. They get more. Matt Pulliam looking downfield. Nice pass to Roy Hyatt. Love to stay at his hotels. And he makes a nifty move here. And then look at that. How many tacklers? They finally get him down. That set up a one-yard quarterback sneak by Pulliam. Mount Spokane building a big lead, and they put it away early. This time Pulliam on the action, and it's Shoup again. And look at him go. Weaving his way to the end zone. Touchdown, 33 yards on that one. Mount Spokane is into the playoffs with a 43-13 lead. All right, what about Shadle Park and Kamiakin and the Highlanders advance too. So both Mount Spokane and Shadle Park will play next week in the first round of the state playoffs. Pasco and Meade, well, the Panthers were playing it out. Ooh, scary kids. Oh, that's a different show. Uh, Panthers strike early and often. Uh, A.J. Layton, burst to speed, gone. 45 yards, Meade up 7-0 over Pasco. Get used to this play, fly sweep. <laughs> Yep, they hand it. Anthony Gold races untouched, 34 yards into the end zone. That play worked the first time. Let's try it again. This time, Samson Brown had to take a little bit deeper cut, but look at the speed. He's into the end zone, 12-yard touchdown. That play worked. Let's do it again. They give it to Gold again. Third time they run the play, third time for a touchdown. Pasco could not stop that. Meade ends their season with a victory, 51-21 tonight. Should run that play a lot more. Apparently, it's unstoppable. It's like the crane technique. If done right, none can defense. You know what? Gonzaga Prep 4A playing at home, trying to get into that state playoff tournament, taking on a wall of wall. Hey, 
Gonzaga Prep cheerleaders, they were here during Sports Extra this year, but it was Walla Walla celebrating early. Trevor Coronado's gonna buy some time, nearly crosses the line, finds J.C. Wickland in the end zone. Blue Devils with the early lead. Prep, though, is gonna answer. This is fourth and goal, they go for it. Nick Wood gotta find the pylon, dives in. Prep takes a two-point lead. Blue Devils, though, looking to answer in scoring position. Coronado's gonna throw it into the end zone, but he's picked off by Cole Barioka. Great play. The Blue Devils, though, would get a defensive touchdown. They take the lead, but the Bullpups would answer again. Liam Bell on the play action going to Blake Bonham. He's there for the score. This was close at half. It was not close in the second half. Gonzaga Prep puts the pedal to the metal. They win it 50 to 21. Another 4A action. Lewis and Clark hits the road tonight to take on Chiawana. And the Tigers season comes to a close as they get blanked 24 to nothing. I got an orange Sharpie and a blue I, I'm not like Digger I'd Phelps. I you, but I got the same I, I, one. I need a blue Sharpie. <laughs> I, I, I messed that up. All right. There are other teams in the GSL playing crossover games. You saw Meade w end their season with a victory. Central Valley last night was trying to do the same thing as they were taking on Southridge out in the Valley. You know, tonight was a great night for football. Last night was windy, rainy, and cold. Southridge with a lead in the half, but the Bears trying to come back. Tanner Sloan downfield, but he's sacked by Corey Remling. Bears would punt. Sun's on the move. Jerry Thomas over the middle, but he's picked off. Chase Gilbert, Bears in business, and they would punch it in. Brandon Arino, he just puts his head down and golfers it in from three yards out, but not enough. Southridge beats Central Valley and ends their season 24 to 19. University taking on Hanford last night. Yeah, it was not a nice night last night. The wind was whipping around. You high in the two minute drill before the half. Griffin Thorson from the Wildcat keeps it himself, picks up the first down. Let's drive. You high. The regular quarterback is Logan O'Neill. The pop pass to Steve Pesch moves it to chains into the red zone. Under a minute to play, and they would finish it off. O'Neill to Gage Anderson. He gauges this one correctly and walks into the end zone for six. Titans three scores at the break, and the U High Titans win their final game of the season 44 to 14. Another GSL team wrapping up the season last night. North Central hosting East Valley at Albee Stadium. You know, that was, it was actually kind of warm last night, though. At least I thought so. It was at Albee. Look at that pick right there. Mr. Opportunity, Alex Bowdish. And what did Coach Fisher say? Get outside! That's Keith Oso, just so you know. Knights unable to take advantage. Later in the first, Indians lining up to punt. Just kidding. Isaac Wicks on the fake. Other ideas. Takes it from the 14-yard line all the way up to midfield. But East Valley stopped them there. Knights get the ball back. And when they do, check out the connection between Dante Clayton and Connor Ram. Not only does he make the catch, look at him stay in bounds. Woo! Yeah, tight walk in there. 53-yard touchdown. East Valley cruises in this one as they get the win 38 to nothing. Remember, get outside. That's from Coach Fisher. Cheney last night playing at Roos Field against Rodgers. Rodgers looking for two in a row. Opening drive for the Pirates. Cole Schaefer throwing into the wind, but check out this play by Ryan Ward. What a fantastic effort for the interception for the Blackhawks. And the Cheney offense went right to work. Austin Klein taking the handoff. Going to bounce it outside. Troll on in there for six. Seven to nothing early for Cheney. Then they had no plans of slowing down last night. Night. Ty Graham, coach's kid, going to get into the end zone. A little burst of speed. He's got a little girth to him, too. You don't want to take him down. Blackhawks win this one big last night, 41-7. to seven. All right. There you go. Let's hopefully the home team in Cheney does it again. Ooh. Yes. Isn't that a Did colorful you tie? tie. That yourself? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I took the thing and hooked it in the back and hooked it in. <laughs> We've been to a lot of fields. We've been showing you our top fields to, 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 uh, to watch a high school football game in. But the setting in Sandpoint... We like that one more than anywhere else. Yep, War Memorial Field in Sandpoint, at least in my opinion, the best seating of any football field in Northern Idaho or Eastern Washington. Built to honor the dead, the field was of Bonner County from World War I. The current grandstand, which they're raising money to replace, was built in 1946, and it has seen its fair share of great players on this field, including Jerry Kramer, the former Green Bay Packer great, played his high school football on that field in the early 50s, we all remember Jeremy Thielbar from a few years ago, who's all over the record books. It's also home to the festival at Sandpoint, the Summertime Music Festival. This is a gem. If you ever have a chance, even if there's not a game going in, stop in in Sandpoint, see this field, 
and admire the view, not of the not of the cement truck, no. but of the lake and where it sits. <laughs> my first uh, start, really, my first playing time varsity in high school was at that field and during warm-ups, you know, the kicker's trying to kick it into the lake. I mean, how many fields can say that for crying out loud? It's, it's an unbelievable sight, and especially early in the season when yeah. it's a nice uh, fall night. Wow. A lot more football coming up, more playoff action, more play-in action, and eight-man football coming up next on Friday Night Sports Extra.